Hello, in this video I'd like to share with you some tips for a manual retopology in Blender and 3ds Max. So I'll go back and forth between the two programs. So for example, Shift A Mesh, start with the cube. So the first tip is to ask yourself, do you really need to do a Boolean operation? So for example, if I just Shift D this and I do some things, for example, scaling, and then let's say also just subdivide this, so for example, if you want to add a hole through this, do you really need to boolean this? Or can you, for example, just select this and then loop tools circle and then just maybe do a little inset and then maybe just right click and bridge. You can see in this situation, I did not need to boolean anything and thus I did not need to retopologize anything. We just got this right here. Now, we can do this, or of course, creases, E, F, E, there we go. All right, control three, and there is our mesh. In this situation, I did not even need to Boolean. So first tip is to ask yourself, do you really need to Boolean? If not, just do things with polygons, plug the modeling, and you get a clean result. All right, tip number two is before you Boolean, it's a good idea to establish some loops beforehand. So for example, if I've got this, right? So I will also just shift A. Let's say I wanna Boolean a cylinder into this. So I'm gonna move that, let's say right here. I'm gonna rotate that. All right, so here I've got this. So if I just Boolean this right away, so I'm gonna go ahead and Boolean and then that and then control a to apply so i've boolean this but now because of this it's much harder to add loops through here for example if i use this tool you can see how it's not really going all the way through kind of ending right here and i can't really add a loop through here you can see it's ending here so what i recommend to avoid this problem is before you boolean just to maybe go in here and subdivide this. Maybe with, let's say two, all right? Maybe just have these loops here to kind of isolate your Boolean and just to kind of prepare it for that eventual operation. All right, so that is tip number two. Tip number three is that when you use Booleans, try to make sure that your objects have similar density. For example, in this situation, this cylinder that I created had 32 sides. Now, is it really necessary to have 32? In some situations, maybe yes, but this situation, it's unnecessary. So for this, maybe we can use 16, for example. So there may be an easier way to do this in Blender, but what I'm just going to do here is just to hold shift to select every other edge. Now in 3ds Max, if you create a cylinder, let's say 32. What you can do is select an edge here, then use right here, you have this value dot gap. That is how many edges will be skipped. So for example, if I set this to two and I use the dot ring, you can see it's gonna skip two edges like the next one, skip two edges like the next one. So by default, it's set to one. So I can select this and I can remove this like so. So you can see, we can simplify things like so. In this situation, it's not quite in the middle, so it actually is important, so we're gonna select this one instead. Now you can see how it's lined up. Just makes things a little bit easier. Let me know if there's a similar function in Blender. But for now, I'm just gonna select this and Control X. There we go. That's a much better number right there. All right, before Boolean, I'm just gonna copy this and Boolean. Well, now when we combine tips two and three, we get a result which is much easier to apologize because now all I have to do, you can, for example, select two vertices and press J to connect them. You can also just knife. So as you can see, 
I can pretty much easily just connect things together. Look how easy it connects, guys. When we set up the topology beforehand, you can see how much easier it becomes. All right, maybe like this. All right, you can see I can easily select things and combine them together. You can also press this button right here, auto merge vertices, and then simply press GG to weld vertices. All right, so we've got one triangle here and triangles are nothing in the world, guys. They're kind of fine in many situations. I mean, they're not perfect, but it's fine to have triangles here and there. So you can see I have a triangle here and an end gone here. Now, of course, when you have that, you can try and kind of finagle things together. For example, it's not really worth doing this case, but I'm just going to show you just so you know. I can get this situation here and then I can cut. I mean, if you really are serious about just having all quads we can do this thing right here where you can see whenever you have a triangle and an end gun you can actually just kind of reroute it to connect together and now we should have all quads here we're just gonna double check quads 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 so as you can see because i chose a much better number of sides 16 instead of 32 or 8 8 would have also been a problem because it's too low and because i had given this proper loops and density beforehand, we we're now able to get a much easier result with manual topology. Control three, smooth, and there we go. All right, guys, tip number four is, for example, if I create a box here and I get this, and let's say I position this right here. Now, of course, we wouldn't really do this because we can just use regularize, but let's say I've got this and edit poly, and let's say I have a bunch of loops through here, all right? To get our edges back, we can use Turbo Smooth with the Spoon Groups option to get it back. And then we can, for example, just select this and remove it if you want to have that end gone here. All right, so in this situation, if I boolean things away, And I also want to make sure that we have no edge removal. Now in 3ds Max, you can kind of force loops through. So if I just go into a swift loop, you can see how similar problem in Blender. It's not going here because of the bad topology. But if we select this and then use connect, you can see how it's forcing a loop through here. At this point, you can use planar on the X axis to get this. You can also turn on edge constraints in situations where you don't have a perfect planar situation, move to a direction all the way, and then move away and you'll get this right here. We can get a similar situation here on the left. Looks really messed up, but we're going to move to the left and then move to the right. Now on 3ds Max, we can do a similar thing as in Blender, just do a combination of welding. However, here's the problem. If I weld this right here, you can see this entire loop is being ruined right here. Well, not really ruined, but it's kind of being angled here. So this is happening. So if you want to do some more clean modeling here, it's now being a little bit ruined because this entire loop is being distorted a little bit. So what you can do is isolate that by the same method right here and now when you weld here you can see instead of the entire edge being moved here it's only the small little piece so you kind of want to isolate your boolean and then you can get to work fixing it up here all right so tip number five is you want to weld the outside to the inside what do i mean by that well if i use by angle in this situation, this is what I mean by the outside, and then this is the inside. So, what you want to do is weld like this, not like this. 
because now you can see we're ruining the inside right here. So we don't want to do this or that. We want to weld like so. We can also fix it by using, for example, edge constraints. Or set flow. This is before and this is with set flow. Another good use for build end is these situations here. So before we do that, I want to make sure you have some segments through here. So for example, we can just try and solve this using these kinds of methods. What we can also do is, of course, cut. Then select this and use build end here. There we go. This one would go right here. So another good situation for build end is just kind of isolate it right here. And not on the end here, on the video about avoiding this kind of thing right here, but you want to isolate it like so. All right, another example, if you have to ask yourself, do you really need to boolean is that let's say I've got this and I'm working on some free form details here. So I'm kind of moving this, extruding this. All right, so whenever you want to have a hole here, it's a good idea to do that before you apply shell. So for example, you would create the hole that you want first. And then you would apply shell. But sometimes you apply shell and then you want to create some detail afterwards. For example, if you apply shell, we can now create some detail that's not perfectly on both sides. So for example, I can select this and just kind of move it up a little bit here. Now you can see we've got a different result on the top than on the bottom, but it's not too late. So for example, I can make a cut here. Now I can swing around to the other side Alt X for transparency, cut, activate, snaps. And now I can kind of use the bottom to cut on this side. And look at that. We now have the same result on the bottom. We can now simply select that and bridge. So we don't really need Boolean for this. We can just do this as well. But now we also need to retopologize some things here. 